the guys, Crossflux here, and welcome back to Let's Play Owlboy. In the last episode, we uh, learned quite a bit of story, defeating Dirk and Captain Molstrin of the Pirates. It seems that some cloaked uh, owl figure by the name of Solus, whom we should all recognize, has taken the uh, three relics that the pirates had and has flown off with them. So in today's episode, we're going to just kind of round up some extra secrets that I may or may not have missed. This is by no uh, means like 100% run or anything like that. Uh, I just did a little goofing around uh, off screen to see if I could find some secrets of the game. Since my wife told me that some collectibles and stuff give a tiny bit of lore. So that kind of piqued my interest to start looking around. But so that I didn't spend like three episodes literally just backtracking across old areas. Uh, hoping that I might find something that's important. I decided to do a lot of exploring off screen and as promised I was going to show you some of the fruits of my labor. So we're going to start things off by uh, getting a couple coins that I missed there in Veli. Uh, I kind of like that nice hidden passageway to get to that chest. But, uh, next off in Tropos I talked to Buccaneary. She said that I need 2,000 coins for the next upgrade. So I think I'm going to uh, have to find a few more coins first. But now that we have that seashell that the Bogwins gave us from that uh, cannon minigame, I heard from my wife, since she's kind of told me a little bit about some of the events that I can do, that if I come to this little spot where Otis looked sad earlier in the game, that an event will be triggered now that I have that seashell. So I have no idea what the event is, I just know of its existence. Otis. I'm here for you, man. You... You know that, right? Ah, uh, best bud Otis, or uh, Getty, I should say. With all the stuff going on, I haven't really gotten to ask you how you've been doing lately. Hmm, not too good, it seems. I never meant to leave you, you know, back in Mezos. I was just so angry after Advent. You know you're my best buddy, right? Well, of course, that's obvious. Whatever happens next, let's stick together. You know, after all this, I really feel like we actually are an unstoppable team. Almost as unstoppable as paper. I'll hang around, if you want to stay here for a bit. Oh, can I talk to him? No, I can just grab him. Can I examine again, or am I just going to get the same scene? Nope, that's it. Uh, I guess maybe the the ocean sounds of the seashell kind of made Otis uh, kind of reminisce and just go into kind of an emotional state. So that was a nice little scene. Ultimately, it didn't seem to have that much importance, but I'm glad I got to view it anyways. But now that the whole band's back together, I wonder if there's a new campfire scene as well. Say, Otis, uh, maybe we should get a little rest before we move on? Yes, please. All right. What do we have in store? I think Twig was going to tell us some stories about his past or something last time, but he didn't want to since Getty wasn't here. Anything else you want to talk about? The Relic Thief. Want to talk about what's going on? Veli. Want me to tell you about the Book of Nocte. Twig, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so it looks like there's five options here. Sweet. The Relic Thief. I saw a guy sometimes that the pirates were called the Owl Boy. A small guy in a robe who was giving Molstrom advice. I think the pirate guard said that he's the one who stole the relics. Owl Boy, huh? I wonder if that's just a nickname or a literal description. Whoever it is, he has much to answer for. Anything else you want to talk about? Hmm. I find it kind of interesting that uh, the party seems to think that the relic thief here is the bad guys but maybe Solus. I mean he seemed to be a pretty nice guy maybe he's hiding them somewhere where the pirates can't get to them again want to talk about what's going on yes indeed it's pretty vague but hopefully we'll get some nice juicy info well we need to find a way up above Mezos we'll just have to look for someone who knows how I think at least we'll have some time even the pirate ships will struggle to get past Mezos I've never known the pirates to fail to get somewhere they wanted to go, but it will likely take them some time to prepare their ships. Then that means we have time to explore. 
Well, it's still important for... I've always wanted to explore, Otis. There's lots of caves and cool places in Tropos and Strato. Come on, we might even discover something useful. Guys, let's go explore. Yes, yes, tally-ho, what, what, chip-chat and all that. There will indeed be time to explore in the morning. But he's right. If we explore, we might find some clues as to what's going on. It feels like there's still a few important things that we just don't know about. Yes, indeed. Uh, speaking of, that's uh, kind of some of the stuff that the rest of this episode is going to be. Uh, me finding some of the secrets that I've missed. It looked completely abandoned. It's tragic to see our home in such a state. It seems that islands have been coming loose and rising towards the sky. It used to be that that was a rare event. With that and the threat of a pirate attack. It's no wonder that people are escaping. And I hope we can help them somehow. Yes, I hope we can too. The Book of Nocte. Okay, it sounds kind of like their world's Bible or something like that. But uh, we'll see what it has to say. Let's see. What was it that guy said this time? I think it was the floating continent. Greatest of the owl homes. The machines produced here were the finest the world has ever seen. For the first time, owl technology surpassed the capabilities of life itself. There seemed to be no end to the heights the owls could reach. So says the Book of Nate, blah, blah, blah. I wonder why he's telling us this. If there was no end to the height the owls could reach then why are their temples all abandoned? And even if he is telling the truth, why is he bragging so much about the owls? And to us? It's almost like he's trying to cover something up. You know, like he wants us to think that the owls were all super great. It makes me almost think that they weren't. I mean, why would any enlightened people make a giant frog and snake monsters? I don't know who this guy is, but I say we grab him next time. Well, Getty actually brings up a pretty interesting point. I've kind of gotten the hint that uh, the owls aren't quite what they seem to be. And um, maybe we'll find out more about that. Yes, Twig, let's learn a little bit more about you. I'm definitely interested in that. I am Twig, the greatest spider in the world. I was born into a pretty boring family. But through grueling training and effort, I have become the best bona fide spider. Hmm. And what does being the best spider entail? Come on, guys. Everything about me is spidery. And I can shoot webs and stuff. Do you know anyone else who can do that? How'd you make the costumes? I sewed them. Pretty good, right? Well, he does have a knack for it. He might be less of a doofus than I thought. Coming from Getty, that's quite the compliment. I'm glad I can hang out with you guys. Tomorrow will be a blast too. I really like Twig's optimism. It really helps bring the group together. Anything else you want to talk about? Well, I think that was the last of it. So, let's get some shut-eye. Let's explore tomorrow. Indeed we shall, Twig. Indeed we shall. Alright, so I know that one of the things that I'm looking for specifically is in the Owl Temple. So while I kind of backtrack through that area, uh, there's something that's been kind of weighing on my heart lately. Um, I'm sure you've all probably noticed kind of how frustrated I've been getting with Owlboy lately, specifically the last couple episodes. Um, first off, I kind of want to apologize for that because, I don't know, normally something like that wouldn't really bother me so much but for some reason I think maybe the combination of me recording myself uh, is just adding some extra stress to my experience of the game since I kind of feel I have this mindset of like um, how should I say it like if I screw up the recording or something I'd have to play through the game again and that's kind of uh, something that's been bothering me with basically all the let's plays that I've been doing Basically, I feel like if I didn't get the part just right, there's a part of me that's just like, you should probably re-record the part and make it perfect. But I know that no matter how many tries I get, there's going to be something about an episode that I just don't like. So I've been trying to force myself to obviously not just shovel together stuff and like put together an episode that no one would enjoy. But at the same time, I'm trying not to break my back and be all like, 
never getting any parts done because I'm too worried about how good the episode's gonna be. So, I know I'll get better as time goes on. So, I think that's something that's been weighing on my mind. The fact that this is a blind let's play. It's kind of like, you know, I only get one shot at recording my true reactions to the game. And I feel like if I screw it up, then it's... I feel like it kind of ruins the let's play and the experience. So, I think that extra stress has uh, kind of gotten me a little bit more frustrated with the game than I otherwise would have been. So I really want to apologize to you guys that I haven't had as much self-control over my emotions in that regard. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys can accept my apology. And actually, I do want to ask that uh, if any of you feel like you want to pray for me uh, to help me kind of get over my anger and stuff like that, I would definitely appreciate it. As I've stated before, prayer truly helps. And just knowing that you guys would care enough about me to uh, pray for me in that regard would really, really mean a lot to me. So, also, that's a uh, two-way road. If you guys ever feel like you want prayer for anything, please leave it in the comments. I'll read it, and I will pray for you. So, yeah, don't want you guys to think it's all kind of a one-sided thing here. Meanwhile, I've been talking completely over all of this uh, stuff here. Uh, I've I uh, discovered a couple rooms that if you take out all the enemies you get some chests and with coins in it and stuff. So I've kind of been doing that uh, while I've been talking here. Um, I don't think there's too many rooms that I have to explore to get to uh, the one secret that I did find though. So hopefully there's something I can think of to talk about to fill in the time so that I won't have to cut it out or speed up or anything like that. But uh, it is actually pretty fun uh, retraversing these old areas that we've been in kind of cool. Uh, I actually noticed that there's a couple different changes in the layouts of the areas. Like for example, these uh, rolling enemies uh, that you just saw fly by the screen here. Let me see if I can find another one. Uh, yeah, that little frog looking guardian thing. Uh, those seem to have popped up in a couple different areas across the game. Uh, across the game world that I've noticed when I've retraversed these areas. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Let's see, and now that we have Alphonse in the group, as well as Twig, there's a couple more things that we can do that we couldn't do before. So that leads to uh, some of the exploring. But um, forgive me if I get just a little lost. Uh, this area is a bit confusing since it's not quite as linear. It's um, more of an open path, so... I'm trying to retrace my steps of what I found earlier uh, during my practice run. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go the long way around, so I think I will cut out this next little bit, and uh, I'll meet you guys back in that vertical shaft with the waterfall. Alright guys, I made it back to the waterfall. Let me see if I can't find the right location this time. Okay, here's a spot that I definitely wanted to find. It was the shaft right above the one that I went into. So it has a couple rings in it, and if I'm not mistaken, it has a couple other secrets in it. Let me see here. Am I going the right way? I feel like I'm not going the right way anymore. Never mind. Uh, forget everything that I just said. Don't think I'm going the right way, but who knows, maybe this will lead to something. I think this is the area where uh, we first got Alphonse on the team. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, because we had to help Alphonse through this area here before he officially joined us. Ah, memory lane. Feels like just yesterday. Alright, so we came through the room on this side, I think, right? Yeah. Alright, no. Let's see, is this the room that I'm thinking of? It doesn't look like it. No, I don't think it is. Okay. Well, that's alright. Uh, I'm sure I'll find it eventually. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Alright guys, making it back into the vertical shaft here. Uh, I just backtracked the way I came because it kind of led into a dead end. Uh, here I found a little secret area with a few extra rings in it. And I'm going to continue off in this direction because I definitely remember there being another kind of vertical shaft area. And this looks like might have been it. Alright, let's see here. Can I find the spot that I'm looking for? It's uh, a spot that has uh, quite a few dogs in it. I definitely saw it in the recording when I was editing the video that uh, there's like a giant golden coin relic-y looking thing that I completely missed. Wasn't even sure if I uh, uh, really noticed it when I was playing through the Owl Temple in the first time through. So 
So that's uh, the thing that I'm looking for here. And of course, I'm just going every wrong way that I possibly can, but that's alright. For those who are persistent, there shall be rewards. And I'm sure that I'll get what I'm looking for soon. So, uh, I apologize, this episode's probably a little uh, scatterbrained, and probably a little glitchy feeling because of all the random cuts and whatnot. But, let me see. Once again, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Uh, ooh, I did miss these coins, however, though, so actually that turned out to be alright. Cool. And I'm really close to those 2,000 coins. I just need a couple more so to get that next Buccaneering upgrade. Let's see, was it through here? Can't remember. Uh, Alphonse? Maybe? Can you help me out here, buddy? What if I come down through here? Maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Uh, it, aha! I did find it. There we go. That's the coin I'm looking for. I found it earlier by uh, just noticing that, well, it's on the right side of the screen, so maybe, maybe if I don't die, for one thing, then I can find it by walking through the right side here. So yeah, as long as you're on the ground, you can actually walk through a tiny little corridor down here into a waterfall section. So none of your party members will be able to come with you since uh, you can't fly in this section. So it's a nice little fun uh, platforming section. I kind of like these little enemies. It feels really satisfying to knock them off their sticks for some reason. Don't know why, it just has that certain little oomph to it. But anyways, let's grab that coin and see what there is to see. It's okay, take your time. The lessons of history must be preserved. Even when that history is a terrible one. With this token, you hold the key. Find me at the sanctuary, and you will see what once was, and what became of our fragile dreams. Kind of sound like that was from the point of a view of an owl, which I assume is the case since this is the owl temple, and it's kind of a relic, or coin, or treasure, or whatever you want to call it, found deep within here. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume that that was an owl speaking to us through like some technologically advanced uh, pre-recording or something along those lines. Or maybe it was like some spiritual thing. Who knows? I kind of uh, like uh, to think of the owls as being very similar to the Chozo from the Metroid series. How they combine both technology and spirituality together. But looks like I'll be able to join them shortly since I died. Uh, not seeing any owls here. Maybe not. Okay. Let's see, where am I? Okay, so it starts me back here. Alright guys, uh, I think I'm going to... Well, I thought about cutting, but I just thought also about how short it was to get back to that uh, waterfall area. Because at the very top of the waterfall, you can actually uh, come back to an area that... This, uh, you think would be kind of off limits, but is it necessarily the case? So let's uh, head all the way up to the very tippy top of this waterfall place. We'll find that we're in the room where that frog guardian kind of trapped us. I think we were up here against the wall. So heading up here, there was like a giant area that seemed really vast and everything, but didn't really notice anything in there the first time through. Okay, well, we got to get through this little generator room first. But then we get to the room that I'm thinking of. Here we go. And uh, there's actually a special character here. If you noticed, Veli was completely empty. None of the inhabitants were still there. So it looks like Hot Spring Sky has kind of moved over here for the time being. So let's see what he has to say. Oh, hello, Otis. What brings you up here? Well... Now that the islands are coming apart and the rocks are floating upwards, I figured it was time to come back here. To remember. To remember what? I grew up here in Advent, Otis. This is where I learned how to swim. How to build a house. How to fish. That sort of thing. I could never stop working back then. Always had something to do. I guess that's the case when you're young, right? It's where I met my wife. Oh, hello. After that, I didn't need to work so hard. Yeah, you had a partner. 
had all I wanted. Can you imagine that, Otis? Such perfect peace. I'm not liking where this is going, actually. I've missed her for so long now. I wish she could have come to Veli and seen you grow up. But I buried her up here. And now that home is in ruins. And the professor says that the rest of the world is ending, too. I'm glad I met you, Otis. With you and the other villagers in Veli, I've had a life worth living. Even though the world ended for me years ago. Well, don't really know what to say there, guys. Sorry, I'm actually getting a, a little teary-eyed here. Um, I know I'm only recently married. It's been almost a year exactly at this point. Uh, probably by the time this video gets uploaded to YouTube, it probably would have been pr near a year. So, I mean, obviously my marriage isn't that long, but my wife means so much to me. And that cutscene kind of just made me think about, I don't know, I guess what it would be like if she were to be gone. So, sorry about that, guys. Totally didn't mean to get super gushy or anything on you, but, uh... I think that's probably a good period to just kind of end the episode. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't really find everything that I was looking for. Uh, I thought for sure I'd be able to kind of do all of my searching in one video. But looks like I'm going to have to cut it into two. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Please have a blessed day, as always. And I'll see you in the next one where hopefully we'll finish up finding all the random tiny little secrets. And then after that episode, for sure, we'll get back to story stuff. So, see you guys then.